Now, uh, I've you know I've, I know most of the uh, the job titles, but I don't really know the specifics of what a BSO, uh, business information security officer, like you know we we talk to a lot of CISOs and we talk to CTOs and so forth. Can you can you give me what the distinction is between a, a BSO, CISO, and some of the others yeah. are C suite people? Yeah. So um, and get this question a lot yeah. because it, it's, it is a new role and actually it varies a bit based on which organization you're in. Some organizations implement the concept very, very differently than others. Um, but for me in this role, the way it ultimately works out to is it's very similar to like a divisional CISO. Um, you know, typically when organizations have large divisions like that, you might have a central CISO is at the you know, kind of the corporate level, but then right. each division has their own CISO as well. Sure. And usually those CISOs report into that centralized CISO function. So my role is similar in that I oversee security for our division, mm. but this is where the B comes into play. And it's B for business because I report into the business line and, you know, into the CTO's organization. And my focus is not exclusive to security. It's bridging the gap between security and the centralized CISO function at our organization. So really bringing those security initiatives, all the strategy that's coming down from that centralized organization and building out my strategy for how that's going to apply given the context of our business. So how do I make this meaningful? How do I apply this frictionlessly? How do I make sure that it it plugs into our pipelines and our SDLC processes the way that we need it to, to keep the business going and to actually enable the business to move quicker. And then on the flip side, it's also bringing the message the other direction, which is bringing that business context to the security team okay. in the central organization right. and helping them understand, okay, if you guys want to deploy this DLP solution, Here's things you need to understand because A, we're heavily regulated. So here's how it's got to, you know, here's some of the requirements it's going to have. Here's, we, we need processes here and here and here because these people need to be able to do things that are going to be exceptions to the DLP policy that you're proposing. Okay. You know, things like that, all of that kind of work is a part of it too. Mm. And so it's, um, I was just talking with a friend last night and the way she termed it, was, it's like the great translator. Right between you know the the security organization and the rest of the business, so that you're you're not having you know you're not creating these things in a vacuum. You're you're letting them know you can't just make this sort of beautiful object exactly the way you want it. It has to it has to be able to serve the business in this way. Is that sort of the idea? Yeah, exactly. And, okay. And sometimes it's forcing accountability both directions. Too. Okay. Like you know, if my security team's going to come and say we want this new thing. We want to implement this new process. Well, why? Right. Show me why. Show me the business value, or let's talk about it and let's find the business value. Because I know on the back end, I've got you know engineering teams and product teams and everyone else that I have to you know justify this to. Yeah. And if it's going to introduce friction, that's problematic. So right. how do we adjust for that? And then of course the other direction too. How do I make sure that my teams are accountable for addressing their vulnerabilities and doing the things that they need to do? Uh, you know, are, they, are they getting the necessary architecture reviews and following our architecture standards and things like that? New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.